The course is Applied Physics for Undergraduates, the second lecture on standards, units, and dimensions. I am Dr. Nasir Vijit Mirza, and uh, let's talk about the standards. For uh, time, the standard is uh, second, and uh, if we look at the standard, it is one second, uh, that is the duration of this much uh, vibrations of radiation emitted by specific isotope of cesium atom. You need not memorize this duration. You just need to know that there are vibrations that are coming from the radiation emitted uh, from the cesium. And uh, cesium <coughs> is a very reliable isotope. It's a monoenergetic uh, source. And these many vibrations happen, then it is one second. Such clocks are called cesium clocks. They are housed in satellites and they are also forming the basis for the global positioning systems. Portable cesium clocks, the size of a suitcase, are commercially available and it is also possible to purchase desktop clocks or wrist watches that can automatically, periodically update uh, the time using the radio time signals. Previously, the quartz crystal clocks, based on the electrically sustained uh, periodic vibrations of the quartz crystal, were uh, used. And uh, they were uh, the first standards and then became secondary standards as well. The <coughs> quartz clocks can be calibrated with uh, the uh, rotation of earth and can measure the time in laboratory and their error is one second in <coughs> approximately two lakh years. <coughs> so although this error is very very small but uh, such clocks cannot be used for very high precision experimentations therefore they have switched to the cesium clocks. So time is, uh, the basic standard is seconds, one minute is 60 seconds, one hour is 60 minutes, one day is 24 hours and here is approximately 365 days and 0 0.2422 days. So we can convert the hours, the days and the year, the year is roughly 3.156 into 10 to the power 7 seconds. So, so, if we look at the some measured uh, time intervals, then nuclear events are really available in very, very short durations uh, of the order of uh, 10 to the power minus 23 seconds to 10 to the power minus 10 seconds. The uh, radiations emitted or the nuclear decays happen in these uh, kinds of time intervals. The atomic events are of the order of 10 to the power minus 15 seconds to 10 to the power minus 9 seconds. Similarly, contraction of muscles happen in one tenth of a second. Typical uh, bacterial generation time is about 3 into 10 to the power 3 seconds. So about 1000, 3000 seconds. Large mammals life is about 10 to the power 9 and we have seen that the 10 to the power 7 about 10 to the power 7 is uh, seconds are a year so it's about 100. Dinosaur uh, extinction uh, time has uh, gone uh, 2 into 10 to the power 15 seconds. First uh, organism uh, which was a multicellular uh, the time has uh, gone uh, 2.4 into 10 to the power 16 seconds. Life on Earth has uh, taken uh, 1.2 into 10 to the power 17 seconds. Formation of Earth took place in 1.4 into 10 to the power 17 seconds. And you see these types of the measurements uh, have been done using the the 
modern radioisotope techniques. The formation of universe has also been estimated uh, uh, about 4.4 into 10 to the power 17, about four times uh, older than the Earth. The third important standard is the mass uh, and uh, in SI units mass is expressed in kilograms and one kilogram is about 1000 uh, grams. However, on atomic scale we have a second standard of uh, mass which is not SI unit but it is one standard. It is the mass of the carbon 12 atom uh, which by the international agreement has been assigned the atomic mass of 12 unified atomic mass units. So one atomic mass unit is the 1 over 12th of the carbon mass and it is equal to 1.66 1 into 10 to the power minus 27 kg. We find that the mass of the other atoms uh, can uh, be measured and determined using mass spectrometers and compared with the um, carbon atom. The standard uh, unit, the standard international unit for, uh, for uh, the quantity of the substance is one mole and one mole of the carbon atoms has a mass exactly uh, that of the 12 grams and it contains a number of atoms numerically equal to Avogadro's uh, number. Uh, the Avogadro's number is uh, the number of atoms in one mole. Of any substance, one mole. One mole is basically the atomic or molecular weight expressed in grams or in kilograms. The, the mole for uh, one substance has the same Avogadro's number as the mole for the other substance. Let's uh, look into some measured masses and uh, the known universe uh, mass estimate is about 10 to the power 53 kg. Rough estimate of our galaxy's mass is about 10 to the power 43 kg. Sun is about 10 to the power 30, 2 into 10 to the power 30 kg kilogram. Mass of the earth is 6 into 10 to the power 24. Mass of the moon is about 7 into 10 to the power 22. So it's about 100 times smaller, roughly 100 times smaller. Elephant is 4 into 10 to the power 3 kg ton, 4 tons. A person on the average is 6 into 10 to the power 1, which is 60, 60 to 70 kg is a normal person's average. Speck of dust is um, 7 into 10 to the power minus, minus 1. I think it is minus 1. It's a fraction of this. But it is 10 to the power minus 10. It's a very small number. A very small speck of dust. The mass of the uranium atom is 4 into 10 to the power minus 26 kg. Mass of electron, one must remember again and again, we are going to use this mass in physics. It is 9 into 10 to the power minus 31 kg. In various experiments after J.J. Thompson's discovery of electron, the mass of the electron was also determined, the charge of the electron was determined, and the mass is uh, about uh, the 9 into 10 to the power, 9.1 into 10 to the power minus 31. Now, Let's uh, look into the distance in SI units and one light year is the distance traveled by light in one year. It is the distance. Remember it is distance. Find this in meters and find the distance in of uh, Proxima Centura. The uh, distance is 4 into 10 to the power 16 meters in the light year. We have to express this. It is in meters. We have to express in light years. One year is actually 365 days and 24 hours in a day and 60 minutes in an hour and 60 seconds in a minute. Then we convert one year into the seconds and it comes to be 3.16 into 10 to the power 7 seconds. 
the speed of light is roughly 3 into 10 to the power 8 meters per second so with this speed light keeps on traveling for so many seconds and then the distance is the one light here so one light here is the will velocity or the speed multiplied by the time of one here so we get the value equal to 9.48 into 10 to the power 15 meters it is 10 to the power uh, 15 so one light here is 9.48 into 10 to the power 15 meters then the distance of this nearest star This d is equal to 4.0 into 10 to the power 16 multiplied by the uh, distance in uh, meters per uh, light year and uh, and uh, this has been divided by the uh, I'm sorry this has been divided by to get the light years and the answer is 4.2 light years. So the first the closest possible star the Proxima Centauri is uh, about 4.2 light years let's briefly discuss when we measure or we calculate uh, values then we get uh, the significant figures these are the number of digits that carry meaning uh, to the measure, measurement and uh, its resolution one uh, if measures uh, the thickness of a cardboard with ordinary ruler then the measurement is reliable to the nearest millimeter and not less than that one cannot talk about one over hundredth of a millimeter using ordinary ruler now for example uh, if x is uh, uh, told that x is equal to three meters then uh, roughly speaking you are saying x is lying between 2 meters and 4 meters and if somebody is reporting this kind of a number 3.14159 as x then x is really lying between 3.1415 and 8 and then 3.14160 so it is basically this 58 and 60 the 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 uncertainty is uh, is for the last last uh, digit so rule number one is that the you should count from the left ignore the leading zeros keep all the digits to the first doubtful one and then stop when we add and subtract the numbers the location of the decimal point is really most important thing now let's do a few examples and we will come to know first example is about this 0 0.0030 kilometer is the number which has been reported now all these zeros count from the left and ignore the leading zeros so we are counting from here this is the first number which is non-zero and the second number which is zero so we will count these this these two and report it so it is three zero kilometer three zero the two, two digits that are significant figures and that is the two significant figures is is this similarly this x is equal to 3.0 meter means there were no zero from the left but only this first digit and then this is not ignorable so it means it is again two significant figures then we go further and explain the explore the first rule and uh, as we have already seen it that the three meters and the 0 0.003 kilometer have same significant uh, figures and the three and the 3.00 it means there are two significant figures there are three significant figures here similarly six five Point four six five and four three significant figures this is four five three and then two zeros they are five significant figures here we have ignorable zero ignorable zero uh, so two significant figures similarly here ignorable zeros and then one and eight are important so two 
1.8 into 10 to the power minus 3 is same. This is uh, two significant figures. Similarly, here we have 4. Look at this 1800 0, 0, and we ignore these two. It is not 6. It is, it is 4 significant figures. When we add and subtract the significant figures, we determine the, the last thing by the least digits uh, or the largest uncertainty. Look at here, 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5 significant figures. Here 1, 2, 3 and 4, 4. And here we have 1, 2, 3 and 4. So we will have the digits of the least uh, to the right of the decimal. It is only two, uh, uh, only two di digits, one digit and three digits. So we express this as a four significant number, but only one in this. The second rule is when we are multiplying or dividing by the numbers, then significant figures are uh, should not be greater than the significant figure of the least precise factor. For example, 2.3 multiplied by this very uh, precise number, the, the answer is 7.2 because this is the least only with the two significant figures. So we write the two significant figures. Similarly, here three and two significant figures. The answer is three because of the of the of the factor that uh, after the decimal place we will have only one, not two. The results uh, may um, or may not have, but the starting number with the few fewer must be kept in view. For example, this is with the two, uh, three, four significant figures. The last, the answer is with the two significant figures. Similarly, three significant figures or the dot has a two decimal places. So the, 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 this is the representation of the answer. In an experiment, if we find the measured value of the diameter as a two pi r and the circumference as a two, two pi r and the diameter as two r, then the if we are given with the values that are measured values as 135 and 142 millimeter, then, uh, then the ratio is the value of pi. But the true value of pi to the 10 digits can be written like this. And if you calculate the ratio using these two numbers, <coughs> then both numbers ratio can be written as the 10 digits uh, value, but this is an incorrect way of of writing a number because your uh, measured values were up to three decimal, to, to, uh, only up to the three significant figures. So you cannot go beyond three significant figures, and the answer must be uh, up to three significant figures. It is three one four that will be the reported answer. So the correct answer must be uh, you must keep in view that it cannot be larger than what you have already uh, seen in the migrant. Concise rules, uh, again we repeat uh, the important part that all non-zero digits are significant. Zeros between non-zeros and digits are significant. For example, this zero is important, these two zeros are important. Leading zeros are never significant, we can ignore them. A number with the decimal point, the trailing zeros to the right of the laser are significant. We cannot ignore them. Somebody has measured. A number without decimal point, trailing zeros may or may not be significant. So more information through the graph or some explicit information on errors is needed to clarify how many significant figures must be used. Let's talk about the fractional uncertainty and uh, use this example to elaborate and uh, if you want to weigh a pet uh, cat and you at home have only ordinary scale, it is a digital scale and it can display only your weight in whole numbers of pounds, then you determine your own weight uh, which is 119 pounds and then you hold your cat to find out the combined weight, it is 128 pounds. 
Now the question is what fractional or percentage uncertainty in your weight and the weight of the cat is there? Solution is that the least significant digit is the unit digit because you cannot go less than that. Your, your scale is like this. So your weight is uncertain by one pound. So your scale would read 119 for any weight between 118.5 and 119.5. So the fractional uncertainty is 1 divided by 119, which is 0.8%. I think it is clear that the least significant digit, the least is that we can measure 1 pound in this scale. And the least thing is this, and therefore... Uh, uh, your measured value, the fractional uncertainty is this much. The weight of the cat is 128 pounds minus 119, which is 9 pounds. However, the uncertainty in cat's weight is still 1 because your scale is same, 1, one pound, you can not go. So it is 1 pound divided by this difference, which is 11%. So you are not really very good about measuring the small values or the, if there are differences of the two values, it is common danger when we are subtracting two numbers that are nearly equal, then relative of the percentage uncertainty is large. And one must keep in view that unless you have a very good scale, you, you cannot. If you could measure the fractional uncertainty to a smaller values, then this error must have been low. Now, finally, let's talk about one most important uh, part of the physics, which is dimensional analysis. The dimensions are the quantities that are expressed in terms of the fundamental quantities, like length, mass, the mole, the time in general. For example, the dimension of speed is uh, the length divided by time and the units are meters per second. So please distinguish between the units and the dimension. Dimension is in terms of the fundamental quantities. The speed definition is the length divided by time. So L divided by T and the unit is the uh, Standard unit is uh, for the length is meter, standard unit for time is second, so meters per second is the unit for the speed. So, in physics we write with the, the large brackets the speed and we say this is the dimension of speed. The dimension of speed is equal to the dimension of length divided by time or the dimension of length divided by the dimension of time. So dimension of length is L, the dimension of time is T, therefore the dimension of speed is L over T. This kind of a procedure is a powerful procedure which is called dimensional analysis and you can derive or check the final expressions and the validity of the expressions. We will do few examples on this. For example, in a metric system, the area has uh, the units of meter square, one side multiplied by the other side. So the dimensions are length multiplied by length. So L square. Similarly, volume is the meter cube is the unit and the length multiplied by length multiplied by length is the volume. Similarly, the speed, which is distance, divided by the time and it is in meters per second so length divided by time so l divided by t is the dimension acceleration has the dimension of l divided by t square because it is meters per second square any equation in dimension analysis must be dimensionally consistent that is the dimensions on the left side must be equal to the dimensions of the right side of the equation. On equation, both sides must be same in terms of the dimensions. So attention to the dimensions can often keep you uh, away from making any errors in writing equations.
For example, this is the equation which is, uh, we are going to see this equation in coming lectures uh, in kinematics. x is equal to a t squared divided by 2. a is the acceleration, t is the time and 2 is the number, numerical number. Now, let us see, is this equation consistent according to dimensions? The dimension of the length l, uh, dimension of the x is l written in the form of this large brackets around x it means and we are going to read it like this dimensions of x equal to l similarly dimension of acceleration written as a within brackets is the length divided by time square and the dimension of time is t so a t square I, i'm sorry a t square means the length divided by t square this is the dimension of acceleration and t square is multiplied so t square is cancelling with this and we get the dimension of length so here we have the dimension of length and on this side it is the so equation is dimensionally consistent as the both sides have the dimensions of length let me reiterate again the dimension of x is l and dimension of all this together is also that of length. Therefore, this equation is dimensionally correct. Let's do a few examples more. One is about the acceleration. Acceleration is the uh, dimension of length divided by the uh, um, meter square, the, uh, meter divided by second square. These are the units in SI. So, acceleration has units of length divided by time square and uh, it is also written as L uh, times T to the power minus 2. Now let's use this for the conceptual uh, development of the new concepts. This is a centripetal force which is proportional to some people say mass to the power A, velocity to the power B, radius to the power C. So, m to the power a, v to the power b, r to the power c is the force. m is mass, v is velocity, r is radius. Now, we do the dimensions. The force, the dimension of the force is equal to the dimension of this whole thing. m to the power a, v to the power b, r to the power c, the dimension is this bracket. So, we can write it the dimension of m to the power a, dimension of v to the power b, dimension of r to the power c as a product. Now, m, the dimension of m is the mass m and to the power a. Similarly, v, v, v is the distance divided by length. So, distance, divide, uh, distance divided by the time. So, distance divided by time. And distance is L, L to the power B and T to the power B because V is with the power. Similarly, R is the radius which is length and R to the power C means L to the power C. Now we see here L and another L and we combine them. This L is uh, multiplied and this L is also multiplied. So L to the power B plus L to the power C is combined this and t to the power b which is being divided here it can be written as t to the power minus b now comes the force the force is mass times the acceleration the mass is m acceleration has the l divided by t square as we have expressed here so the force is m into l into t to the power minus 2 now both sides if they are dimensionally consistent then this side must be same as this side so dimensions must be same therefore the powers of m power of l the power of t must be same so let's compare the power of m here a and it is equal to 1 for power of l b plus c must be equal to 1 Similarly, minus b must be equal to minus 2. And from first equation, a is equal to 1. From 
लास्ट इक्वेशन c इज इक्वल टू फ्रॉम लास्ट इक्वेशन c इज b इज इक्वल टू टू एंड पुटिंग b इक्वल टू टू वी गेट c इज इक्वल टू माइनस वन वंस वी हैव डन दिस a b एंड c देन the force uh, which is proportional to the m to the power a b to the v to the power b and c r to the power c we can write m to the power 1 v to the power 2 and r to the power minus 1 which is divided by r so the formula for this uh, central uh, centripetal force is mv square divided by r let's do one more example on dimensional analysis uh, there there are fundamental constants uh, in physics and uh, three fundamental constants are really very very important and uh, one is uh, speed of light written here in purple 3 into 10 to the power 8 meters per second the newton's gravitational constant which appears in the uh, gravitational force is capital g In old times, uh, Cavendish measured this gravitational constant to be six point six seven into ten to the power minus eleven in meter cube divided by second square kilogram. These are units. Remember the difference between units and the dimensions. The Planck's constant is another constant, which is a fundamental constant in physics. Six point six three into ten to the power minus thirty four kg meter square per second. Now, question is, find the Planck's time using the dimensional analysis. The Planck's time depends upon these three constants: c, capital G, and h. And the form of this is in the form of power. as previously we showed a b and c powers similarly planck's time has uh, again a relationship like this red colored relationship the planck's time is proportional to c to the power i proportional to g to the power j proportional to h to the power k but we don't know i and j and k however we know the dimensions of these Uh, constants let's write the dimensions of these constants the c is a it has a units of meters per second therefore the dimensions are length divided by time the g has the mass uh, the 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 g has the meter meter cube second square and the kilogram mass and therefore we write here l to the power 3 the length to the power 3 It's not multiplied; it's power, and t to the power minus two, the time, and the mass to the power minus one kg, in a divided form. Similarly, Planck's constant has a kilogram meter square per second, and the kilogram is a mass. Meters length square, and time is in the denominator, so we write it t to the power minus one. now we know these three constants in terms of the dimensions the fundamental uh, quantities and let's now write the planck's time uh, using these uh, dimensions now the equation is that the planck's time depends upon uh, c g and h therefore the dimension of the planck's time is equal to the dimension of these three quantities in product so we write the tp as a product of uh, these three uh, dimensions c to the power i's dimensions g to the power j dimensions h to the power k dimension then substitute the values of the dimensions in terms of the fundamental length divided by time is the speed of light and its power i similarly l to the power 3 t to the power minus 2 m to the power minus 1 to the power j is the u for g similarly for h and then l m and t are really combined together so their powers are collected let's do it for first l l to the power i 
so i l to the power 3 l to the power 3 and j so it's a 3j l to the power 2 and k so it is 2k so the first thing is i plus 3j plus 2k similarly the other powers now we see here that uh, t p is the time so it is only t the dimension of t p is time and so it is t and it has l to the power 0 and mass to the power 0 so we compare the powers of l t and m l power 0 so 0 is equal to this t to the power 1 so this quantity is equal to 1 m to the power this thing must be m to the power 0 because any quantity's power 0 means it is equal to 1 <coughs> so these are three equations and if we solve these equations and we can solve them easily we can substitute uh, uh, and reduce and find out <coughs> then we find out the quantities and please verify yourself that j comes to be half k is half and i is minus 5 by 2 therefore uh, this uh, the planck's time is c to the power minus 5 by 2 g to the power half h to the power half you see the half is appearing in every uh, term let's find out the numerical values for these constants and if we want to find out uh, i can put the values of these constants c value known capital g is known and capital h is uh, small h is known therefore the tp comes to be 1.35 into 10 to the power minus 45 seconds and uh, uh, one can express it in the under root form also and it's a, it's, a, it's a numerically very very fine value commonly defined planck's constant is slightly different from this value because another constant 1 over under root of 2 pi appears and since the dimension of a constant is not uh, there therefore uh, therefore uh, it is not rate now in a similar fashion we can determine the planck's length also and planck's mass also and both have uh, some fundamental interpretations in physics but what we wanted to tell you is following the balance equation of any kind in physics will have dimensions on left side and right side and for equation to be consistent the dimension on left side must be equal to the dimensions of the right side the units must also be consistent and that's how physics will move forward and this will make your measurements and the results time independent and invariant sort of we stop here with the Uh, idea uh, bit idea uh, that uh, measurements can be done measurements have errors measurements can have uncertainties we can have the uh, equations balances of things and we can analyze the equations using units and dimensions in next lecture we will start discussion on motion of particles motion of masses motion of bodies and we will write down kinematic equations and we will see how the motions are really dictated by certain fundamental laws thank you so much